Hi, today we're going to be exploring the question, did Napoleon Chagnon's research methods harm the Yanomami Indians of Venezuela? On the parliament side, we believe that Napoleon Chagnon's research methods have harmed the Yanomamo Indians of Venezuela negatively. Chagnon not only violated the anthropological code of ethics, but has also shown his overall lack of respect for the Yanomamo people and their sacred traditions. Furthermore, his misleading research incited a chain of events that eventually led them to lose their land to gold miners. As an anthropologist, you are given a large and influential platform, and it was Chagnon's duty to remain respectful and observant. The Code of Ethics calls for researchers to ensure their work does not harm the safety, dignity, or the privacy of with whom they work. Yet Chagnon continued to belittle their culture and minimize the Anomami society altogether. He has outwardly referred to their leader, Davy Kopanawa, as a Sakar store Indian and described his first encounter with their people stating, the whole situation was depressing and I wondered why I ever decided to switch from physics and engineering in the first place. His behavior towards their people evidently shows that he does not understand them and is capable of being biased in his findings. Anthropologist Brian Ferguson also pointed out that Chagnon used methods to extract culturally sensitive data and biological specimens that have disrupted the cultural norms and caused tension between the people. Chagnon fabricated a lot of his research and he was still able to undermine an entire indigenous village. Meanwhile, in his attempts to discredit their actions, Chagnon deliberately stood idly by while politicians military leaders, and journalists listened to his betrayal of the Yanomami as vicious savages who essentially kill for revenge, women, and reproduction. Anthropological students even know them for their title of the fierce people. However, Kopanawa says that Yanomami arrowing and white people's war are extremely different in objectives and indiscriminate slaughter. Chagnon reduces them to savages and only perceives their actions as similar to warfare. Kopanawa acknowledges the differences in opinions, but he states, Our elders certainly did not arrow each other because of women, and men furiously confront each other and ardently struggle over women that is usually settled by non-lethal fights. The disagreements that occurred between the different individuals in their village only happened because of their circumstances in their society. As an outside observer, Chagnon did not understand their motives or intentions, and therefore he cannot make claims that solely relied on his perspective alone. Lastly, Chagnon did not view the Yanomami Indians as victims of genocide. In 1993, when it was reported that Yanomami were dying at missionary posts, Shagnon said that the Salesian missionaries were killing them with kindness. Statements like this, along with Shagnon's reports of misinterpreted violence, have been made numerous times and were enough for the government to find arguments to justify the dismembering of the Yanomami lands into 19 small islands. The military chief of staff stated, being too violent, they have to be separated in order to be civilized. This also made the land vulnerable to the 40,000 gold miners who invaded their land and harmed their people. Therefore, there must be accountability of Shagnon's actions. He was the one who called attention to the Yanomamo people and did nothing to protect their lands. In addition, he made the first step in a series of incidences that led to the death of many Yanomami and left their land tarnished. For a minute, we must place ourselves in the shoes of the indigenous Yanomamo people and see from their perspective. An unfamiliar man who knew very little about their culture was able to degrade their traditions and values to a wide audience, and this portrayal forced people to see them as dangerous thus creating a takeover for their land and killing many of their people. The misrepresentation of culture still happens to this very day, and it is definitely something to think about. While the parliament may believe that Chagnon's practices did harm the Yanomano peoples, we on the opposition side, while we respect this argument, cannot agree.
In fact, there is substantial evidence that Chagnon took repeated and lengthy measures to both respect and embody the customs of the Yanomano peoples. This is displayed through his awareness and attention to the name custom in particular, which indicates that it is taboo to use the names of individuals in public, which Chagnon never did, therefore he never violated this taboo. It is clear through repeated research that the names of the tribe members are public knowledge, and as such, Chagnon simply accessed that public information. Once it had been acquired, Chagnon displayed further respect by not abusing the power of knowledge that he then had. He displayed additional consideration when he was also collecting names from other villages and going and accessing that public information. Contrary to the beliefs of some, he did not pit villages against one another. He displayed respect by not riling up a village before they trusted him by going around and asking for the names of ancestors with total disregard to the local customs. And it's also important to note here that the Yanomamo people did eventually trust him, and we on the opposition side believe that that trust was not misplaced. Chagnon displayed an exceptional amount of precaution as to not just go around the village spewing names that might anger the people. He was actually very delicate about when he brought up his knowledge of the names in order to preserve the customs and norms of the place in which he was. As such, it is safe to say that the claims made against Chagnon were vastly blown out of proportion by tyranny. Chagnon was simply exercising the same practices as had been practiced by anthropologists before him, if not even more considerately. There is a long history of field workers completely altering and harming the villages that they were in in anthropology, but Chagnon took exceptional care not to do this by not violating their local customs. Although Chagnon did offer the Yanomano people Western goods, can this not be considered to be an attempt to provide just compensation for their participation in Chagnon's studies? We on the opposition side believe that the answer is yes, and that in doing this, Chagnon was actually making a direct effort to uphold the anthropological principle stating that such is required, as Robert Borofsky suggests. Borofsky also notes that Chagnon's research was largely misused, and it was this misuse that became such a huge source of the accusations against Chagnon. Some groups took Chagnon's research as an indication that the Yanomano people should be split up due to high levels of violence. And funnily enough, this splitting them up is what actually would have allowed for the increase in gold mining. However, Chagnon spoke at length protesting this adamantly. Chagnon firmly argued that the findings and his research were not intended to be used in this way, and he was adamant that the Yanomano people should not be split up and divided. In fact, Chagnon stated that the interpretation of his findings in this regard completely ignored the intent behind his study. Therefore, the use of his research in such a way was actually a violation and cannot be used against the validity of his practices. The simple fact that Chagnon published his research does not make him responsible for how others use it, and therefore Chagnon cannot be said to be responsible for any potential harm that might have arose as a result. To further support our argument, we lastly urge you to consider the scientific principle of reliability. This concept is rooted in the idea that the same result, observed across different situations, indicates that a finding can more likely be trusted as accurate. Chagnon's findings on kinship studies and the concept that those who had killed more men were passing their traits on because they were more successful and therefore had more wives was actually repeated at a later time. This therefore indicates the reliability of his findings and disproves the claims that his research was baseless and that his findings were crafted. In fact, there's an argument against him that actually states that he manipulated his data in order to make his work seem valid and worthwhile, and this is completely false. In summary, Chagnon's findings were therefore not harmful to the Anamano people because he respected their customs, spoke out regarding the proper use of his findings, and made a significant effort, effort to uphold the anthropological principles that had been put in place before him. Hello, my name is Yosef, and today I am presenting to you the Parliament's rebuttal on the topic of Chagnon's fieldwork with the Yanomama. 
Contrary to the arguments laid out by the opposition here today, we believe there is considerable evidence suggesting that Shagnon abused sensitive information that he acquired from the Yanomamo during his fieldwork. It has been reported by Ferguson and Tierney that Shagnon's research methods clearly contributed to the destabilization of the relations between different Yanomamo factions. We have learned, for example, that the names of the ancestors is a topic of taboo in Yanomamo culture. Shagnon, in order to collect these names for his own research, has himself admitted that he at times lied to a specific village about having obtained the names of their ancestors by the members of another village. This he did to incite their anger towards the other village, later capitalizing on their resentment to get them to reveal the ancestral names of the people in the other village. In this way, Shagnon uh, contributed to increased hostility between different factions of the Yanomamo. In their research, an anthropologist should always be committed to gathering their data in an ethical way. This includes striving to in no way disrupt or hurt the society in which one works. Shagnon's manner of acquiring taboo names from the Yanomamo is a clear example of how the research methods of an anthropologist can be directly harmful to the people that they work with. Another way that Shagnon stirred up unnecessary conflict among the Yanomamo was in the way that he provided certain villages with much val valuable uh, steel, tool steel tools and goods something that stirred up jealousy and animosity in neighboring villages. Whether these goods were provided as just compensation for the Yanomamo that provided him with information, as proposed by the opposition, or as a means of deliberately destabilizing relations between different Yanomamo villages. An anthropologist should in any case still always be aware of the consequences their research methods might incur in the society that they study. In this case, it has been documented that Shangnan's giving away of steel tools and goods to certain villages led to increased rivalry, li rivalry between villages, something that later led to wars and plundering where people were killed as a result. Many of the issues seen in the fieldwork of Shangnan among the Yanomamo can be traced back to his efforts to collect very large amounts of information in a very limited time. This is what led him to use the ethically questionable methods just mentioned. It is important in any anthropological fieldwork that the people that are being surveyed, including their customs, traditions, and their own well-being, always be respected and protected. Never must the collecting of data for anthropological studies violate this principle. During his fieldwork, not only did Chagnon re Chagnon's research fail on this point, but his research methods even contributed to violent conflicts between different villages, indirectly leading some to be killed as a consequence. With this information on hand, it is evident to us in the Parliament that the research methods of Shangnan did indeed harm the Yanomamo in many ways, and that his research therefore should be considered clearly to have fallen short of the ethical standards of anthropological fieldwork. Inside the opposition, we actually agree with the Parliament that anthropologists are often given influential platforms, seen with Margaret Mead, who used hers to advocate for many social issues. However, Napoleon Shangnan did this as well. He advocated for the rights of the natives, contrary to their beliefs, especially during his time when he was researching the Yamamoto people. Many NGOs and other groups were active in, active in the area, such as missionaries and government officials. However, he felt that they were not doing sufficient work to help them. As a result, he inevitably criticized them, hence why he called the, them cigar store Indians, because he felt that they, that they were more interested in profiting off them rather than actually helping them. On top of this, he actually saved the lives of many Yamamoto people by vaccinating them. Had he not done this, they would have suffered a similar fate to the Tanio people when Columbus arrived and introduced smallpox and other diseases like the bubonic plague. Just prior to there, there actually was a smallpox outbreak, a small one, but it was already spreading quickly. Had it not been for Shangon's quick thinking, the Yamamoto people would have certainly faced extinction or wiped out. In an article titled Fighting the Darkness in El Dorado, Katie Wong, who did a po profile on Shangon, also notes that the missionaries who were who were critical of him were also spreading lies that he had f poisoned the water and was killing their babies. Later claims which were verified to be false. In terms of his ethical practices, Shangon's Shangon was investigated by three different organizations, most notably the Anthropological Association. American Anthropological Association, or AAA, which found that there was no discernible evidence that he had done anything wrong. On top of that, many of the investigations that 
as Daniel, author Daniel Gross pointed out, found he found them to be flawed and not really helping the situation any. As for his data, now it is true that he that he did manipulate his data. However, however, many in many fields it is not com it is not uncommon to do this. It is especially more common to try and see if if data is manipulated to hold it up to the same set of standards. It's kind of like if you were writing a scientific paper. You have your your th your thesis has to your hypothesis has to be tried multiple times in order to see if it gets the same result. Hence why Napoleon Shangon manipulated the data to try and see if it could get the same result. But one last thing. While it is true that the that Shangon did give vile, did give steel objects to the Yamamoto's, he was not the first one doing this. In fact, many of the missionaries and other NGOs that were active in the area, as well as the government, were giving them guns. And it is also noted that gift exchange is an integral part of Yamamoto culture, especially in the context of kinship.